Welcome to Let's Talk Chiropractic. I'm Dr. John. This is Dr. Alex. Hey, brother. Hey. Again, last week we talked about the importance of how people sleep. Again, it's the small repetitions that most doctors, Alex, they don't take time to discover. We're going to talk about it in today's show, how you sit. Men and women have different postures, but how we sit is critical to keeping our adjustments, and it could be causing people to be wondering, why is my leg numb? Why does my knee hurt me? You know, why does my back never get better? It's the way you're sitting. So again, go get a glass of water, come back for the next 30 minutes, our 40 years of practice, we're going to talk about what we've observed on good and bad, how your posture is to sit. Come back. Here's a quick story. I like stories. I don't want these shows to be boring. I have this truck driver. He drove for 52 years. He logged like 3.5 million miles. He used to go from New York to California. Big six foot four husky guy. He came in for a CDL exam. He had a huge wallet. Honestly, two inches thick on his right side. During the exam, he goes to me, I have a chronic back condition. My right side kills me. And again, we've seen it, Alex. The same side that they sit with the wallet in the back pocket is always the same side that is misaligned. Because a lot of these truckers, I've even seen it, they will lean. They will lean towards the gear shift because they say if they have to downshift. So a lot of my guys, they, they sort of have a, and I have to get them to still sit up straight, have your hand ready if you have to downshift. But they can't be leaning, you know, to the right side all the time. So how many men have you seen in your practice with these wallets? Oh, geez. Uh, it, it's got to be it's got to be the most common for the sitting problems with men, I would say. Right. Fair enough. It is. And uh, what I like to do is if they're there with a kid or a spouse or somebody else, I take the wallet and I put it on their feet after I've got them measured. And a lot of times it's the same. Wow. The same difference. Yeah, thickness. so if they're, if they're a full inch off, yeah. the wallet's an inch thick. Well, Happens a lot. This guy was so excited when I finally told him and I gave him an adjustment. He paid for the seed ale in the adjustment. His pain, I get this big fruit basket like a month later. Oh. His, his pain, like he said again, no doctor ever told him not to sit on a wallet. So I always tell you, how busy we get, we have to take the time to be detectives to figure out what's going on. So men, men like to slouch. So you be my model, and they like to cross their legs. So, how do I, so when they do that, right now there's compression on your lumbar discs. By bending their leg, a lot of guys will say to me, my right knee bothers me. How do you sit? I crossed my legs for 40 years, doc. I've been doing it for so long. They don't realize it slowly and gradually gets to them. So Ooh. do you see guys sitting like this? Yeah, they'll be sitting in our waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I saw know. a guy just today doing this one, right. you know, where they sit like that. Oof. And again, when, when you, they bend over, you know, when I go to church, yeah, these 80-year-old patients are so bent over and they go over up for communion, yeah. and they don't realize that, as you just said, when you bring your feet back, right. rear end back, shoulders back, you know, everything, you could almost just feel like it's more ergonomically or easier to do. So talk about that study you said. Yeah, there's a, there was a study done on posture, okay? It, it's fairly recent. I'm going to say uh, it was while I was in school, so it's about four years ago. Uh, this study showed that the most important part for, for keeping your posture for affecting back pain is having your head over your pelvis. So if you put your head over your pelvis, you'll see it kind of gets hard to slouch. Like Slouching like that is a little strange, but that, that was what they found was the correlation. They just had people sitting and they were tallying up the, where their shoulders were, where their head was, where their pelvis was, and they found if they just have their head over their pelvis, it helps a lot. And there's a natural instinct, right? The natural instinct, why do we want to put our feet up? It's because you want to open up those hips. It helps the low back. So if your low back's aching for that, by the way, you need an adjustment if you feel like you need to put your feet up. But also, you can get that same effect by tucking your legs under your chair. So if you're on a stool or something, especially a little higher, mm -hmm. and you put your knees down, it opens up that back just like it wants to be. And you get the same results. And your head ends up right over your pelvis. Well, remember, Problem solved. I ruptured a disc playing soccer in Bishop Hafey back in 75. In my car, and I have a nice car, and, and if, if I home if I watch TV, I use a lumbar cushion. Perfect. And again, it contours. So when I put this behind me in my vehicle, I think it does exactly what you say. It, it almost forces me. 
to like like sit more erect and it pushes my body and forward. And look at your shoulders. That's Sorry, perfect. and I could drive honestly eight, 10 hours and you don't get out like an old man. You know, it was stiff. So again, how we, I think so many truck drivers that just sort of like slouch or, or people in general, long distance, like vacations this time of year, they slouch behind their wheel. Doc, my neck and shoulders, and they don't realize it's from slouching in the vehicle. You said it earlier. Before we talk about how women sit, what about kids? How, how are they looking at their um, texting and, or iPads? What's their posture? I like? wish it was just kids too. With That's the texting true. and the, the tablets and the phones. I see this all the time. Uh, okay, let's say somebody's waiting five minutes because I'm taking care of another patient. I come into the room and they're looking at their phone down here. Look, my head is way forward and I'm hanging off the muscles in my neck and my shoulders are forward too, so my shoulders aren't helping with this. Just 14 pounds of weight, well in my case maybe 15, but 14 pounds of weight is usual, the usual head size. And looking down like this, you're straining this whole neck and you're destroying the curvature in it. So what you want to do with this phone, I don't, I don't care if you use the phone, right? That's fine. Bring it up. I even say, you can plant your elbows. Plant your elbows right here. Now, bring it up to your, look at that. If, my, if I'm up here, my shoulders naturally want to go back. My head is aligned with the horizon. You want your eyes on the horizon. And it's not very uncomfortable, right? If you're holding it like this, that's uncomfortable. But if you plant your elbows like this, that's a little bit more manageable. Same thing. Women will come in and say, John, my, I have bilateral tension across my shoulders for 20 years. Do you have a computer job? Yeah, how'd you know? You know, so again, they look down all the time. So same thing. When I say to them, raise that screen, put like a 12-inch box if you have to, or lower your chair, it is a joy. After two, three visits, they get a massage. John, all my pain is gone, but now... I sit and I told the whole office to sit like that. So once you turn people on to proper posture, it helps their body then to hold their alignments. Then they don't keep living in this chronic pain all the time. Right. Let's take a break. It's probably around seven minutes. We're going to talk about girls. So many girls, either they sit on top of their foot or they cross their legs or they sit Indian style or they sit on the floor. So let's talk about all of those habits and why it's not good for their spine. So again, go take a little glass of ice water. Come on back and let's talk about you women about how your posture is for sleeping. So come right back. Welcome back to Let's Talk Chiropractic. Sometimes the small, simple things in life is what can change your whole life. Proper sleep at night, proper posture we talked in the last show. Now we're talking about proper posture for sitting. Again, just a quick story. I had a man call me from Allentown. He was the CEO of his company. His executive secretary had seven years of back pain. He spent $20,000, sports specialists. I walk in the room. She's sitting, if I could do it even, <laughs> she's sitting like this. Oh my goodness. So when I walk in the room, I say to her, does your right side bother you? Yeah, it has for seven years. I've tried acupuncture, physical therapy, and I said to her, look how you're sitting. And she looked at me like, I always sit like this. But again, Alex, to, to us, my knee right now is being strained. Even the ankle, I think, is compressed. Yeah. But I'm putting, if you can feel it, all my weight is on my right SI joint. Yeah. So when I checked her, sure enough, her right side was about a half inch off, making a simple adjustment. But getting her... Not to sit like that, I got a call about three weeks later from the boss, the CEO. You're a miracle worker. <laughs> I spent $20,000 for this executive secretary for two years. What did you fix in three weeks? I'm not a miracle worker. It's the detail of walking in the room and seeing her sit like that. So again, number one, girls. And again, I'll be blunt with you. She was only about five foot tall. Right. Just to share an observation. Taller women will cross their legs like this. And again, it always knocks off the right side. Chronically, 20 years later, they start developing knee problems from it. Doctors will say it, it causes varicose veins and it's not good for circulation. So many people now know, don't cross your legs. But it's the shorter girls. They will say to me, if I could be open, again, be like a detective. Doc, if I could share my, the truth. When I sit back, I'm only five foot one. My feet don't hit the ground. So I, I feel uncomfortable. So they're the ones who usually sit on top of one of their legs. Or they'll even sit. It's amazing to me. I don't even want to do it. They will sit Indian style in their desk 
or on their bed for hours. You know, a lot of people working out of the house. But when they sit Indian style, you know, with, with like on top of their legs, right. it causes even more troubles on both of their knees and, and their hips. So ask your taller girls not to cross their legs on top, the shorter girls not to sit on top of the foot. Many women, I don't know why, they'll say, I watch TV sitting on the floor. Right. And it hurts their back. And again, Alex, you just showed it. When, when I'm sitting more like this, but to sit on the floor, you either have to sit Indian style or you have to like, you know, have your legs out in front of you. I, I don't think there's a good ergonomic way. Or so lay my, on your stomach like that, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah, you could even do it, but, but do not sit on the floor. I tell them, just sit in a chair. If their TV, you know, get back or whatever, seven, eight feet from a colored TV. But if they can have good posture. So sitting back in a recliner, research shows is much better. But when they lay on a couch, have you ever had, you know, couch... You know, yeah, couch trouble. I will have so many patients. The first thing they say to me, John, I went to the ER. I thought it was a panic attack. I thought it was a heart attack. They did an echocardiogram. They said, my, my heart's fine. First thing I asked them, do you lay on, your, on a couch? Yeah. I, my, I, my, my mother died upstairs. I don't know. So I sleep on a couch every night. So when I explained to them how the middle cushion of the couch sags more deeply than the other ones. So every night the thoracic spine sags. It pulls the ribs, they get a mm -hmm. panic attack, they get almost like a heart attack. So when we cross their arms, I put my hand behind them and they get off the couch. It is a beautiful thing when they say, John, I don't believe it. All that pain is gone. And it's also, it's, it's wild how much the ribs, uh, it only affects your breathing this much. But your brain is so well tuned to how much you're supposed to be getting that it notices that on a subconscious level and it starts to increase breathing because it's saying something's wrong, I want to fix it by just increased breathing. It, and that throws off your blood chemistry. And you end up with this vicious cycle that causes terrible anxiety, which a panic attack also feels just like a heart attack. Yeah. Plenty of times. A lot so, of my patients, terrible. when I go on vacation, they say, Alex was great with adjusting my ribs. I right. think you, you right. so I think you it's already know how to check those ribs because it can cause a lot of like chest pain, not cardiac related, but again, it's spinal and rib related. So you do a great job with people, you know, adjusting ribs. And it'll feel like someone's stabbing you or poking you, something when your breathing doesn't feel right. So that's a good thing I tell people. Right, we, we never want to uh, say, oh, it's not a heart attack without being very critical, right? If you think you're having a heart attack, that's a very serious thing and you should take it seriously. But when breathing, causes a sharp poking pain that's a good sign that it's a rib yep that's, and and of course well, another nice thing about rib adjustments is you get instant satisfaction you do it's gone right away yeah they get a lot of times we have to fight things for weeks yeah. but with ribs and then hopefully they don't repeat the mistake that caused it just gone right then well tell me how much of a detective you are this time of the year now girls are wearing sandals and uh, flip-flops when they're laying on their back and i'm adjusting their neck I look at their toes. Oh. The shorter girls have much curled toes from wearing high heels. Oh. So when I talk to them about it, I say, stop wearing these high heels. Doc, I, I know, but I, I want to seem taller. But when you look at their toes, their toes start to get like this claw effect. Taller girls, the six foot tall girls, don't wear high heels. Look, their toes are straight. Right. So again, it's all because I really believe if they have foot problems, that instability will affect the rest of their legs and their back. So, so, oh. so I've learned just to just really spend, I tell you, that wow factor, to look at all these little factors, because the girls say, yeah, I, I wear these four inch pumps, whatever it is, and they walk awkwardly, yeah. but they just want to look taller. Yeah, I don't know how high heels got so popular. It's a very oh. unnatural way to walk, you know, and it even puts all this terrible, uh, all this pressure on your, the joints on the back of the spine, the facets, and then they'll come home and they'll take their high heels off and they'll, They'll hold their knees because their back hurts so bad. Well, and again, it's people watching the show, they're going to say to me, I wear high heels. I'm 26 years old. My feet are fine. It's my 55-year-old women who've worn high heels back then that get the Morton's neuroma, mm -hmm. the bunions, the hammer toes. They don't realize, Alex, it's, it's, a, it's the repetition of what we do to our bodies that 20 years later, you know, me seeing hundreds of people a week for 20 years, I developed bad elbows and wrists. So now I had to take care of my elbows and wrists so that I could keep, keep on working. So it's that rep. So anybody watching the show, don't cross your legs. Don't sit on your legs. Don't sit on one of your feet. Don't sit on the floor. Get a nice recliner or a nice supportive chair. We've got to take a quick break. 
Come back for the next part of the show. Hey everybody, I mean this from my heart. You could have done a lot of other things tonight. Went for pizza and beer or watched the sports game, but I, Dr. Alex and I, we love what we do. We've changed lives in this office, so we take it, it seriously when we talk about how you sit. Let me tell you another quick little story. A woman came to my office. Her husband was 83 years old and he died in bed of a heart attack. She didn't want to sleep in bed anymore, and I respected that, I, I, you know. So she slept on her couch. No matter what I did, she always had back pain. So I asked her son, I said, go to Lowe's. There was a research done that get a three quarter inch, not half inch, not quarter inch, three quarter inch piece of plywood. It has to be a couch that the pillows come off because some modern couches, the pillows don't. Right. He measured, let's say, I don't remember, it was 56 inches long, 32 inches deep. He put that on top of the couch, put the pillows on top. Now, and that's honestly seven years ago. That woman, I think she's in Freeland, no back pain. So my suggestion to you also is, is if you have patients who, they say to me, and, and I have multiple reasons, John, I, I, I lost my job, I can't afford a good mattress, my mattress is terrible, I want to sleep on this couch, so I, I've learned to give in to people, but tell them the story, get a three quarter inch, one piece of plywood. They used to sell on TV, if you ever saw it, these, these hard pieces of plastics that go under each cushion, so we used to give people better support when they sat but they told me it was sort of like wobbly so now when they put this one piece of board again it's superior to what you see on tv with these little plastic pieces wow. so do you ever do you ever take a nap or sleep on a couch yeah well okay. only if i'm bad get a piece of plywood oh <laughs> uh, yeah and that would uh that's an interesting solution too because i've had the issue with my patients where they'll sit on their couch and it's so soft we call it the lazy boy soft right the lazy boy couch you get so soft and picks up their knees and clipping under here will give them sciatica or cause pain in the thigh or throw off their back and they'll pick up their legs and do all those terrible things they're not supposed to do to avoid pinching underneath just from sitting on the couch. So I've always told them to put the pillow, an extra pillow, which brings them up a little bit, but that's a better solution. We just put see, a ply it's more board, a three quarter inch you say. Right, three quarter inch. One continuous, that makes sense, keeps it all level. Well, that's great. It's a similar story. People you will sell say a couch. to me. People will say to me. They'll say, "My bed is only three years old, but when my husband and I sleep on it, we went on vacation once." So right now, a lot of people are vacationing this time of the year. Sometimes these hotels don't have the best mattresses. My wife and I, it, it kept like indenting in the center. I, maybe there was one big person that slept in the middle of that bed. Oh, no. or, you know, and again, my wife and I always sort of keep our distance when we're sleeping. So maybe they were just good lovers who just hugged each other <laughs> all night long. But this bed, and by the second night, we both were starting to get like back spasms. So I looked in the closets of this hotel room. I said, honey, I'm going to lift up the mattress. Get a thick blanket. You, most hotels have like extra blankets. I, f I folded it maybe two foot wide five foot long. As I raised up the mattress, she put it on top of the box spring. So where this mattress indented in the middle, it now is sort of like a little bit of a pitch to it. So then when we laid on it, perfectly level. Nice. Alex, I have, I've gotten phone calls from people in Myrtle Beach. John, my mattress is killing me. What do I do for the next five days? And I told them to do this. Yeah. I get a phone call two days later. You're right. It worked. Because everybody thinks I'm going to get a piece of board. If you put a board under the mattress, it will still sag in the middle. It wow. gives everything more support, but there's still a weakness in the middle. So you have to put something higher in the middle of the mattress to make it level. So some people say, at least do this in your house until you can go and afford to get a better mattress. When you say it, it seems so obvious. It's great. Simple solutions, right? Well, I just said, brother, I, I, I'm really praying that many people at first thought, what a boring topic. Right. Don't sleep on your stomach, don't slouch, but if they listen to these details, again, I would love to watch a show of a dentist or a cardiologist sharing all of their, their tidbits of what they've seen in 30, 40 years. Yeah. So I'm hoping everybody leaves and says, you know what, this was an interesting show. There's a lot of details about how we sit. You know, for example, let's talk about when people go camping. They'll tell me that um, they, sleep, they sit on logs, uh, you know, no back support, they go to baseball games, they sit on these football bleachers, 
no back support. I used to go to Hafey's basketball games. I would sit at the top bleacher all the time. I went in my back against the wall. Mm. And I never wanted to take one of those. They have these portable seats that you can attach. But a lot of my patients, they go to their grandkids' baseball games. They'll take a portable chair with them, a nice supportive chair. So if ever you're at a football game or a baseball game and the bleachers are killing you, at least take a portable cushion, like one of these cushions, like a, a, a kitchen cushion. So I'll tell them, take at least a kitchen cushion. Maybe have your wife sit behind you. You sit back against her knees. So I have a family. They'll sit right behind each other and they'll support each other rather than sitting next to each other. So it's just little details, but it, it helps their backs to stay in place better. Mm. So, you don't even think about that stuff. Uh -huh. Well, again, brother, I, this show, I, I pray, literally changes people's lives because I, I used to sort of always cross my legs when I was younger. I never do now because patients oh. will say to me, you know, only because I've, I've seen how much damage it causes. And once you program, your like I'm never a stomach sleeper anymore. I don't cross my legs at all anymore. You know, I, I sit at these football games and people don't know me. They'll say, relax up there. Cross your legs, slouch. And I say, that, I feel fine. I, do, I, I sit at the edge of a football field like this for two hours at Harmon Geist watching a game. That's but, that, but that's comfortable posture for me. Because yeah. I had a bad disc. They wanted to do surgery, when, you know, 40 years ago. I want to keep taking care of my back so it doesn't cause any trouble. Yeah, when I moved into my uh, apartment when I was going to school, I didn't have any furniture, so I sat Indian style on the floor. Okay. Let me tell you, after doing that for a week, whoo, I was over that. Wow. We borrowed chairs. That was the first thing I had to buy was chairs. We had no money, right? So we, we bought chairs once we had money. And yeah, sitting on the floor, worse than not having a dining table. Well, good. Well, we have to wrap up. So in conclusion, everybody, we talked a lot about how men, kids, women, how they sleep or sit. I can't go over it all right now, but I believe it'll change your life. Just. Take it to heart. Don't be one of these stubborn people who don't want to take advice. We have nothing to gain by this. We're trying to give you what we see behind the scenes. You could change your life just by critiquing how you sit and doing what we talked about. So take it to heart. Change your life. Have a great day.